Hello and welcome back to the fish locker out on the rocks. Now uh, I've just got set up, the light's just fading. We're about an hour after low water and I'm on a, uh, I'm on a rock mark down in Cornwall. Now um, what I'm planning on doing is I'm fishing maybe four hours up to high water. Um, I'll see how it goes for how long I stay. It's, uh, it's a new mark to me, I've never fished it before. I've come down and had a little look with my little lad the other day. Um, it looked like it's rocky in close and round here. And then over towards my right, it looks like it goes off onto sand. Now the two rods I have out at the moment, like I usually do, as soon as I get to a mark, I get a rod out. On the right hand side, I've got the three hook flapper rig. And all I've done is I've baited it with little tiny pieces of squid and then um, I've tipped the bottom one with a bit of frozen black lug. And the one on the left, I've got an up and over rig with a whole calamari on a, on a panel hook set. Now, um, I'm hoping for, <laughs> for anything. I'm hoping for a nice eel, a bullos, a spur dog, a ray. Um, I'm actually getting a bite on this right hand, this left hand rod now. The right hand rod, the, the one with the little scratching rig, I casted that out about maybe half an hour ago and I've got it all set up. And I have, I have actually missed a good bite on that. So I think there must be like whiting or things like that. Or whiting or, co or coley or little schooly bass kicking around down in close. What I might do later on is, if I do end up catching quite a lot of whiting, is I'll put a live bait rig out. I'll show you all these rigs as I'm going through all of them. Just see how we go. I don't know if you can see that bite up there. I am actually quite high up. I am about a good 30 feet off the water here. There is like a pretty sheer drop in front of me. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice that I'm also wearing my life jacket. Now, um, I don't always wear it. So generally, you know, when you see me wearing it, it's a time when I feel like I should. And fishing a rock mark on your own in the dark is definitely one of those times when I think you should wear a life jacket. I'm going to knock the camera off now and I might cycle the baits out and then uh, hopefully we'll get to show you a fish. Right, well I cycle those baits around and the little strips of squid I was actually getting some little rattling bites on and uh, when I brought it in they were completely clean so it must be something something small in the sand, it could be a little white, it could be anything, uh, it could be a little rockling. The big bait however, I did get one or two good good wraps on that and when I come in that was completely stripped now uh, that doesn't look like fish that's like crabs so there must have been a fish down there rooting around but I'm imagining that on the sand there is going to be crabs so I'm going to have to keep cycling my baits every like 15 to 20 minutes all I'm doing at the minute is I'm just mounting a single calamari like that on two 6 or Cox and Roll specimens in penal and then whipping it up with some elastic. That way I have a nice long bait, I have a little bit at the bottom that wiggles about and if it takes it at the top and it gets that hook, it takes it at the bottom and gets that hook. But you will notice that both hooks are well proud of the bait. I'll wait until I've caught something on a little scratching rig and save, save the blank and then I'll switch that over to a big bait as well. It's um, tides rising up nicely. I've got a little bit of a little bit of waves. You can maybe hear them in the background. It's creating a little bit of wash down here. But so far, touch wood. We haven't had any trouble with any weed. That can be a real pain. Um, hopefully, 
as the tide as the tide continues to flood we're going to show you some fish. I have just just cycled out the bait on my scratching rig and as I thought a little pouting. Now you can see that I was taken on black lug and squid. Now I've put a round lead without any spikes on so it rolls around a bit in the tide. Now that I know that there are some of these out and this is what this is what they're actually this is what's taking the bait, I am gonna stick a live bait rig out. See the reason being is I'd literally just cycled that other bait out as well. If I can find it. I just cycled the bigger bait out that was a whole calamari 15 minutes ago so it shows you how quick they're on the bait now I don't believe it's just crabs it is fish as well but if I can hook one of those and keep it out there alive there's a better chance of catching some of it because the crabs might not take a live fish they'll eventually they'll kill it and they'll eat it but it'll be there for longer hopefully long enough to catch us a decent fish so that's what we'll do I'll fish this bait and then I'll switch them over and put live bait rigs on this is the live bait rig that I'm going to try now you'll see I've done a video about this I put a link in what I've done is I've got a larger hook this is an 8 hook, and using the snell knot that you can see there I've made effectively like a hair rig and on the dropper I've got a 2 -0. now I think this is um, this is cox and roll specimen extra and this is a 2 -0 cox and roll specimen it's just a long shank hook with a nice gape and I've put a bit of black lug and squid so the plan is that what happens here is a little fish like a pouting or a whiting comes and swallows this and stays on there alive swimming around leaving this big hook free something bigger comes and eats that and then gets hooked on bigger hook. Now all I've got here is this is this is 60 pound mono to a little barrel on the end. And all I do there is I'll just connect that to my up and over rig or my pulley rig, cast it out with a heavy lead and let it sit. And what you're looking for is you're looking for like a rattling bite and that's a fish picking that up and then you just sit there and leave it. Just leave it rattling away so that you know that there's a fish there. And what you're waiting for after that is like a big pull down or a slack line bite which shows that something bigger has picked up a little bit that's the theory i'll uh, i'll bring one of these in now we're uh, as the as the tide's pushing on heavy i'm having trouble keeping the baits out at distance i mean i've got uh, where is it uh, uh, i'm using 150 gram leads and the oil it's doing is it's just the, the tide pull coming around this headland against the line is just tripping the leads so I'm having to shorten my casts uh, hopefully that won't stop us finding the fish I'd actually just had a, a really good bite on that bigger rod and I was waiting for it to develop it started to hit it and it stagged me up so I'm assuming it must have been like a, a little conger or something as I was snapping that one out that rod's just gone <laughs> now this is one of the problems with fishing a rock mark by yourself um, if I, when I had to go away and try and change the angle to snap that out, it means I had to leave that rod alone. Now, if a good fish picks it up, it'll pull it straight over. So what I tend to do is I back the drag right off, so that it, there's no tension on it at all. I mean, the, the tripod's solid in the rocks, and the rod's tight in the, in the tripod. So hopefully, when a fish picks it up, it'll just pull line off. Now, when I came back, there was actually line being pulled off, so I wound down and struck into it, and uh, it's a dogfish. So <coughs> I've just landed that there, it's sat in a pool of water now, I'm just going to go and hook it. I just thought I'd just show you this, I've just rigged up again. This is how I'm sending out my live bait rig. You see there, how the big hook is onto the, the lead clip and it's just on an up and over rig with that bait there. Now um, what fish could resist that?
And there's there's your dogfish taken on the bottom of my three hook scratching rig. Now I was just to go. I was just thinking to myself, I'll just bring that in and change it over now. I'm glad I left it out because it's got us this bonus fish. Now, although it only is dogfish, I've had many a blank saved by a dogfish. Let's get him unhooked and get him back. Get those big baits out. The uh, as I've said, the tide's running through left to right, and it's fair coursing through now. So I've um, I've had to up the weight of the, the, of the lens. <coughs> with the uh, with the live bait rig, obviously wanting to grow a fish on there as well. There's a lot of chance of it breaking out. So I'm using that as a way of gauging it. If I if I get a little bite and it stays where it is, it's a little fish. Like now, if I get a bite and it breaks the lead out. Chances are it's a fish that's too big to be a live bait. Or like this. A dogfish donut. If um, if all we're gonna get is packs of these, I might pack up early. Because um, I can't I can't keep a live bait out there because it'll just get mullered, I can't put baits out there because I'll just get them done. Quite often when a pack moves in, it's just not what you can do. I've tried it before, like where you, you you either increase the hook size, or you increase the bait size, or you just try and fish through them. And these greedy things. <coughs> oh well, we'll see. You'll notice it. Like I get different bits of kit and I trial them out and use them. Some things I like, some things I don't. This is something that I've just, just got actually. My wife just got me it. It's a little, lamp you can see there it's got a little handle but it also stands up it's got a magnet on the back that's it and it's fantastic <laughs> you want to see the amount of light it gives off it's it's unreal it's um it's a great little lamp it's uh <laughs> it's got seven hours charge on full beam and it's all you'd ever need and cheap and then um, well that's it there look nice little tip for you um, ah yeah <laughs> it's cracking it's a cracking little thing just got a Amazon right you can see the up and over rig with the whole calamari on a panel hook is also just picking up dogfish see there look it's picked up the bottom hook so that's four dogfish in the last four casts now um, I'm not staying here to catch dogfish <laughs> I've got half an hour walk back to the van and I've got an hour drive back to the house I think, uh, I think I'll call it a day we'd um, try out a new mark Learned a couple of things about it. Uh, had a few fish, even though they were dogfish, had that one pouchy. Um, lost what I think was an eel into a snag. But that's fishing. Um, I'll put some links in here to um, to show you the snell knot for the live bait rig, the up and over rig, and um, a three up flapper rig, in case you're curious. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching. I'll see you later.